Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. I remember I challenged Iager, one of the most shit-talkingest motherfuckers you ever meet, to a basketball game. He was sitting at the bar, good timers, talking shit about Craig Biggio. Craig Biggio this, Craig Biggio that. I just wasn't feeling. I had a bad day. I looked at the end of the bar. I won't you shut the fuck up. Running your goddamn mouth. I shut the fuck up. And he looked at me and said, won't you shut the fuck up, Tyrone, or Paris, Troy, or whatever name you're using to hide from the government. That's it. I challenge you to a one-on-one -on -one basketball game. He was like, all right. He's not ready to see me on the basketball court. So I was going up to Silver Lake doing shoot-arounds. I beat size motherfucking ass. Plus all the regulars and good timers just hyping his head up. We'll never hear the end of it if you let that darky beat you in basketball size. And we had a $100 bet. Talk shit to each other probably for about a good two months. So game day comes. Got audience. Get Eric Smith feeding the shit live via Twitter. Good No Brothers were there. Teddy Ball game. Paul Larson. Kenny Smith. All the regulars from good timers. I walk in. Size got somebody. That was Nick Bibbins. Fucking shagging for him where he's doing his lineup drill setting up and shooting getting a full practice in before we play our game probably got there 45 minutes to an hour before i even got there to even pick up a basketball let me paint the picture again he has someone shagging for him he's shooting if he misses or if he hits he has somebody underneath the rim grabbing the rebound for him i get there these motherfuckers hand me a basketball with a nipple on it you ever seen them basketballs that are so wore out that a nipple forms on it like a bubble forms on it like a fucking zit that's what they gave me to practice with you think anybody was shagging for me? Hell no. Nobody was doing anything except watching Shy, giving him high fives, patting him on the back, patting him on the butt like, don't you let this darky beat you. Don't you let this darky beat you. And I was like, all right, cool. It's all right. I remember one time I shot the goddamn ball. It was a brick. It hit the back of the rim, bounced off, and it went over to the crowd of people that were gathered to watch us play basketball. You know what them motherfuckers did? They kicked the goddamn ball the other side. I had to go chase and retrieve my nipple ball. Then Cy, because he weighs three times more than me, goddamn backed me up. He used the backup method. He like back me down, back me down, back me down, lay up. I fought back. I hit a couple threes in his face, but he did win. Cy si beat me. He beat me in basketball. I give it up to Cy si You beat me in basketball. Whoop de doo. You can retire. You don't ever got to pick up another basketball again because you beat me in one on one basketball. But I'll challenge you again, goddammit. I'll play you for any charity anytime you want, any place you pick it. I'm sober. I was drunk then, Cy. Si. I was drunker than Cooter Brown when I played you in basketball the first time. I tell you one thing about good timers, though. After the game is over and I gave Cy si a crispy $100 bill, I was on my way back to work. So I went to the bar. They were singing, he's a jolly good fella. They carried him in on their shoulders saying, he's a jolly good fella. Bullshit ass motherfucker. When I went back to the barber shop, I had one person following right behind me. Paul Larson, true fucking story. With Drew Larson right behind him, Terrace cut Drew's hair. Cut Drew's hair. I just bet a 100 bucks, right? Andrew Larson handed me a $50 bill and said, you my boy, goddamn right. That's the kind of shit that goes down at Good Timers 2. Latonia, Kentucky, the United States of America. Si, I want a rematch, motherfucker.